farmer stood leaning on the fence at the edge of his property. He watched as a red sports car came over the top of the hill and followed the road right to the spot where he was. The driver pulled over on the side of the road and he called to the farmer. He said, excuse me, sir, do you know how to get to Route 91? The farmer thought for a few seconds and then said, no, don't reckon I do. So, okay, do you know where the nearest turnpike entrance is? Again, the farmer thought and said, no. Don't reckon I do. So how about the town of Hadley? Do you know where the town of Hadley is? How, what direction it is from here? Farmer thought and said, nope, sure don't. Exasperated, the driver raced his engine and says, you don't know too much, do you? Farmer nodded his head and Replied, well, that, that may, may be true, but uh, at least I ain't lost. You may have heard of a United Methodist church or two that had the name Aldersgate in their name, Aldersgate United Methodist Church. Now, you may not know where Aldersgate comes from, so I thought I'd I tell you, and why it's important will become obvious in about a sentence or two. The year was 1738, and the place was London, England. And on the 24th of May in that year, Anglican priest John Wesley went very unwillingly to a Society meeting on Aldersgate Street. About a quarter before the hour of 9 p.m., he felt his heart strangely warmed. Wesley said, for the first time, I felt I did trust Christ alone for my salvation. At Aldersgate, John Wesley felt that sweet assurance that God truly loved him individually, specifically, and personally. John Wesley had struggled for many years as a pastor, and at Aldersgate, he received a blessing, much like the blessing Jacob received when he wrestled the angel. It seems that wrestling is a part of life. Wrestling with pain, sickness, problems. Wrestling with temptations, stress, guilt. Wrestling with emotions, faith, sorrow. And ultimately wrestling with death. All these struggles are a part of life, a part of all of our lives. Jacob was a struggler, a wrestler from the very beginning. When the time came for Rebekah to give birth, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first to come was, was Esau, and after Esau came forth his younger brother who came out of the womb with his hand on Esau's heel. And they named him Jacob because he grasps at the heel, wrestling even in the womb. As time went by, Jacob wrestled Esau's birthright away. In the ancient times, the eldest son received the larger portion of the inheritance, which was their birthright. So when Isaac passed, the father of Esau and Jacob, when he 
when he died, Esau was to get two thirds of his property and Jacob was to get one third. But Jacob bought Esau's birthright at a very opportune time for, for a bowl of lentil stew and a piece of bread. Jacob struggled all his life, especially with his twin brother Esau. He even wrestled Father Isaac's blessing away from Esau as well. Years passed. The two brothers had been separated. When one day Jacob was told that his twin brother Esau was coming to meet him with 400 other men. This struck fear into Jacob because Esau could have possibly held a grudge against him. The night before this reunion, Jacob prayed and wrestled with God. Jacob had for years been running from the guilt of conning his brother Esau out of his rightful inheritance. His implicit motto had been, why face it when you can avoid it? In the comic pages I read one day, uh, Linus and Charlie Brown were walking along talking. And Linus was speaking, he said, I don't like to face my problems head on. I think the best way to handle or solve a problem is just to ignore it, to avoid them. In fact, it is a distinct philosophy of mine. No problem is so big or so complicated that it can't be run away from. Now Jacob did not lack success. He did well with his portion of the inheritance. But the shadow of what he had done years before dogged him. This is the problem with a pain that's not wrestled with. It can undercut our life on a daily basis. And now Jacob had to face possibly his vengeful brother, Esau. What's more, he had not only risked himself, but now his family was at risk. What he has avoided has now become their trouble. It is a problem. All too often, we visit, it, we, we visit our undealt with pain on other people. But the good news is this, if we wrestle with what threatens us, then we may discover an unexpected blessing. Surely Jacob was wrestling not only with God that night, but also with his fear of Esau and his pent up guilt. In the end, Jacob was different because he had struggled. Dealing with and wrestling with life situations is one of the ways we can receive many of life's blessings. Many experts will tell you that if we do not wrestle with the different situations in life, if we repress them or run from them or do not deal with them, we can do great harm to our mind and our spirit, which will also bring harm to our body and our soul, which will affect the way we love our neighbor and love God. Some have said that Christ came to do away with suffering. Others have said that Christ came to explain suffering. But I posit to you that Christ came to fill suffering with his presence. He came to show us that it is in the struggling that we find blessing. 
It isn't the wrestling that we find life. A man confined to bed because of a lingering illness had on his sunlit windowsill a cocoon from a beautiful butterfly species. As nature took its course, the butterfly began to struggle to emerge from the cocoon. But it was a long, hard battle. As hours went by, the struggling insect seemed to make no progress whatsoever. Finally, the human observer, thinking that the powers that be had made a mistake, took a pair of scissors and just made a small little clip, enlarging the hole large enough that the butterfly could crawl out. But that's all the butterfly ever did, was crawl. The pressure of the struggle was intended to push colorful life-giving juices back into the wings. But the man is in his supposed mercy prevented this. And so this insect, instead of flying on rainbow wings above the beautiful gardens, was condemned to spend its brief life crawling in the dust. Struggles help us to grow. They strengthen us. They help us to develop into what God intends us to be. John Wesley faithfully struggled with his place in the kingdom of God and received his assurance that night when he went reluctantly to a meeting on Aldersgate Street in London where at 8.45, during the reading of Luther's preface to Paul's epistle to the Romans, he felt his heart strangely warmed. And for the first time, he felt that he did trust Christ and Christ alone for his salvation. Jacob at Peniel wrestled with an angel and received the life-changing blessing from God. We too must struggle. Struggle with our calling, with life situations, with our faithfulness on a daily basis. To run away or evade just stunts our growth and causes disruption. So wrestle, struggle, live in Jesus' name. Amen.